Yo, what's up YouTube? It is an incredibly profitable time to be a sports better in the United States. And the reason that's true is there are hundreds of sports books that have launched in the US. They all try to set and manage their own lines. They all have different odds from one another. So the market is super fragmented. It's super inefficient. So there's a lot of opportunity. It's kind of like the early days of crypto. But anyways, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a full run through of the Odds Jam sports betting software. There's a lot of different strategies you can use to make money. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down each tool on Odds Jam, showing you how it can make you money. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, unsurprisingly, on Odds Jam, you can browse odds. So whatever bet you wanna go with, it's always important that you try to find some value right? Finding value, finding an edge is what's going to make you money long term. So as a simple example, if you look at Terry to score a touchdown, this is crazy, right? The market is so fragmented. These odds, these prices vary so much from book to book is if you look at Terry to score a touchdown, he's plus 175 on FanDuel, right? You're betting 100 to win 175 in profit. On DraftKings, he's only plus 115. They're ripping you off on DraftKings. Like that is an absolute ripoff. For the exact same bet of $100 on DraftKings, you would win 115 if he scores. On FanDuel, it's 175. So this is kind of sports betting 101, but I mean, if you're placing bets at plus 115 on DraftKings, when FanDuel, another sports book, is giving you plus 175, you're getting ripped off, right? You're getting a horrible prices, and it's gonna be impossible to be a profitable sports better, right? It's like trying to be a day trader if you have to pay 50% more for every stock you wanna buy. You're just not gonna be able to make money long-term um, if you're consistently getting ripped off. So the first thing you can do with Odds Jam, any market you wanna look at, any sport, WNBA, eSports, whatever, is Odds Jam reads in all the data, millions of odds a second, so you can see which books are offering the best possible line. So if you're trying to become a profitable better, line shopping is critical. You gotta be browsing odds, and I'll show you why this really matters. So let's say over a month, you win 100 bets, you lose 100 bets, and your unit size is 100 bucks. If you get bad odds, so let's say you're betting at minus 120, you're gonna be down 1600 bucks. If you get plus 120, so just finding value in the market, finding better odds, you're gonna be up $2,000. So long story short, finding value in the market, it really can turn you from being a losing better to a winning better. So it doesn't matter if you're placing only one bet a week for like five bucks, but if you're looking to get serious about your sports betting and make some money, you gotta be browsing. So a couple things to mention are in the US, there's a lot of regulation. So sports books are only legal in certain states, right? Like DraftKings is legal in New York. It's not legal in California or Texas. But even if you're in California and you're betting on, let's say, Fliff, you should still want to look at the odds on FanDuel and other sports books, right? They're still data points. So for example, if we play Terry to score a touchdown at plus 155 on Fliff, because we're in California and that's the only book we have access to, I mean, it feels kind of crappy to know that there's other sports books out there that are giving you a better price, right? That kind of shows you that, hey, Fliff is kind of ripping me off. They're only giving me plus 155 when other books out there are giving you plus 175. So I always tell people, regardless of where you're located, when you're making bets, you wanna see as many data points as possible, right? I look at sports books in Europe, Canada, I don't have access to them, I don't bet on them, but the more data points you have, the better bets you're gonna make. So one thing to know is, you know, every state has different sports books, so Odds Jam will auto detect your location, and by default, it will show you all the sports books legal in your location. So if you're in New York, it'll show you all New York sports books. But of course, the whole platform is customizable, right? If there's any books you don't want to see bets for, so this is one of the most popular tools on Odds Jam, the Positive EV tool, you can filter out any books, you know, you, you don't want to look at. Same thing with sport. I mean, I recommend betting on every sport. If there's good golf bets, I want to bet on golf, right? If there's good plays in the WNBA, I want to bet on the WNBA. So like soccer, for example, You'll see some bets on FanDuel. This has actually been my most profitable sport to bet on on FanDuel. But again, some people don't like betting on soccer, so whatever. You can also filter for specific sports, leagues, odds jam, fully customizable, every single tool. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions about the best sports books to get in your location. I'm happy to help out. Um, you know, I've lived in different places. I've traveled to different places. So I've used over 50 sports books, prize picks, bet MGM, parlay play, basically everything you can imagine. I've used it and I'm happy to provide any tips. 
But the one thing I do want to make clear is if you want to be successful sports betting, this doesn't even relate to odds jam, you want to have as many books as possible, right? This is very different than like a checking account or a savings account where it doesn't really matter if you have Chase or Wells Fargo, right? All of these books have different odds lines from one another. So the more books you have, the better, right? Sometimes the best odds are on BetMGM. Sometimes the best value is on FanDuel. So the more books you have, you know, the better. And I've basically used every single one. All these books are a little bit different, but the good thing is most of these books also have pretty lucrative signup promos, right? So all these books are competing against each other. So a lot of them give you pretty lucrative bonuses, you know, incentives to sign up, a lot of $100 deposit matches, you know, risk-free bets. So more books also means you're gonna have access to more promos. So now I'm gonna take you through kind of every tool on Odds Jam, how I use it, what are the benefits, any, you know, pro tips I have, stuff like that. So again, the first thing we mentioned earlier is Odds Jam has free odds comparison, any game you wanna look at, any sport, any market, you know, you can do that real time odds from every sports book in your location. And again, you can switch around your state, but let's go to the positive EV tool. This is the tool that I have had the most success with And all I do when I'm using it, right? Is I just select the sports books available in my location. And typically I set the max odds somewhere between plus 150 and plus 200, which we can talk about here in a bit and nothing else, right? Like I, I said it earlier, I don't really care what sport, what league, what market, what date range, what game I'm betting on. You know, some people like to set a minimum profit margin. Obviously, I don't really care about betting things at a 0.1% profit margin, but I just like to see more bets in general. So typically that's, the, that's all, right? That's all I have set is max odds of plus 150. And all this tool is gonna do, right? All Odds Jam does is it updates all of these lines, you know, millions of lines from sports books and just kind of points out value in the market, right? So my first pro tip is the really good bets. They're not gonna last forever right? You are day trading the sports books. So the first thing I learned when I was a trader is the importance of speed, right? The great trades aren't going to last forever. And it's the same thing in sports betting. So I always recommend if you can have your sports book accounts kind of logged into. Um, I also recommend using Odds Jam on your desktop. You can do it from your phone. Odds Jam also has an app. But again, it's just much quicker to navigate and get bets down when you're logged into your sportsbook accounts and you have everything pulled up. But anyways, let's go back here. So let's kind of go through everything. So you can see here, this percent column is just your profit margin, right? This is your ROI. So if you think about it, the stock market ROI is roughly 8% a year. This bet has a 7% ROI, right? And this game is tomorrow. So this really is the power of sports betting is once you know how to get an edge, you're typically betting on games that are that day, maybe a couple days away, but in general, you're betting on games that are tonight, today, right? So your ROI, your return is daily, right? So if you have a 2% ROI on your bets, there's 30 days in a month, that means you'll have a 60% ROI on how much you're betting every single month. That's the power of sports betting, compounding. You know, people are like, oh, stock market, you get 8% a year. In sports betting, if you get 2% a day, right? If you get 2% ROI on your bets, if you can even just find 2% of an edge, then that's 60%, you know, over the course of a month, which is crazy. So this is your profit margin, right? This is your recommended bet size, which we'll get to in a bit. And then this bet, you know, just kind of highlighted right here is the bet you want to go with. So it's telling us to bet, you know, Cole under three and a half receptions on jock market at minus 119. So you may be thinking like, okay, like, why do I like this play? Why should I go with it? And really just look at all the other sports books, right? All of these companies, Caesars, DraftKings, FanDuel, MGM, these are billion dollar companies. They've invested hundreds of millions of dollars total in their ability to set lines. So you want to treat them all as data points, right? And you're going to see they all like, this is crazy how fragmented this market is. They're all pricing this line around minus 170, minus 180. On jock market, you can get it minus 119 right? It's like if a stock is trading in the market at, you know, 180 bucks and you can buy it for 119 bucks, right? 
So you can see Pinnacle here is known to be one of the sharper or more sophisticated sports books. They have this all the way down at minus 182. So that's crazy. It's a great bet to go with. Um, and you, again, you have tons of other data points. That's what's great about the NFL is there's hundreds of sports books on Odds Jam that are posting lines. So you have tons of data points. All these books, you know, they're taking bets, moving around lines. You know, the market's not static. They're taking bets, moving around lines based on where action's coming in. So you have tons of data points to make good bets, right? So anyways, long story short though, if you don't really care about the math, how to calculate your profit margin. So again, this percent column is your profit margin. You literally can just like place the bet in green, right? Cole, you know, under three and a half receptions. Then you can see again, more sports books you have, the better. Hey, there's some good bets on win bet. Hey, there's some good bets on Caesars, parlay play. The more books you have, the better. And again, I recommend just like staying logged into your sports book accounts. Um, so that's basically, you know, everything. And then your recommended bet size we can get to here in a bit. So a couple things to mention about the positive EV tool before, you know, we kind of move on is this also works for live betting. However, live betting is hard, right? And the reason live betting is hard is everything moves so quickly, right? You think about the NBA, if a team makes a three, that affects the odds for the total, the point spread, everything. So you really definitely need to be logged into your sportsbook accounts and moving quickly if you're gonna try live betting. A few other things to mention is we do have some recommended filters that you can turn on right here. Just click that button. And that's really meant for kind of new sports bettors. You can of course create your own filters and save them if you want to. And the market's always moving. So you can place all these bets and then maybe you're like, oh, I wanna place some more bets. You can just hit this refresh button. And then, you know, you can also hit this automatically receive. This is a play button. And all this is gonna do is automatically refresh the positive EV tool for you. But let's move on to the middles tool. Um, and again, we have a little quick start guide too. We have free tutorial calls. There's tons of stuff. You know, we, we really want this product to be useful for you to help you make money sports betting. So you can take a free tutorial call. You can look at the quick start wizard, which may also be helpful. But anyways, let's move on to middle bets. And the thing about middle bets, right, is when you think about positive EV betting is here, all the sports books have Cole's line at three and a half receptions. There's no discrepancy in where books are setting the line. Every book has his line at three and a half receptions. What we're comparing is prices, right? The reason we want to place this bet, Cole under three and a half at minus 119 on jock market, is every other sports book, even though there's no discrepancy in where the line is being set, they all have this priced as a huge favorite, right? They're all like minus 182, minus 175, minus 148. All these books are data points telling us, hey, minus 119 is a slam dunk, right? Now, the next thing you need to consider, which is where the middle tool, so let's move to the middle tool, where this comes into play, is what happens if the books have the line set at different levels, right? So you can see here, Odds Jam is recommending this bet between Fliff and um, DraftKings. And again, you can filter for whatever sports books you use, whatever sports you wanna look at, you know, feel free to. Um, we're gonna go through this play just for the sake of example. I really like to break down the math and stuff like that. Anyways, one last thing, I guess, about the EV tool. So back to the positive EV tool real quick is this recommended bet size is just from the Kelly criterion, right? So this is kind of known as the optimal way to manage your bankroll for new bettors. So you can see here, you can just pull up a little calculator. You can adjust your settings, all that type of stuff. Honestly, it's not a huge deal what Kelly multiplier you use, but that's ultimately what leads to, you know, your recommended bet size is the expected value, how much of your bankroll you should wager. But anyways, let's go on to the middle tool. So here you're like, whoa, here DraftKings, right? Has the line at four and a half and Fliff has the line at five and a half. So this is a bet we're gonna go through. Why is the middle tool recommending this play? And what you're gonna notice, and we'll kind of run through the math, is we have Texas State minus four and a half on DraftKings at plus 228. On Fliff, we have Louisiana plus five and a half at minus 215. So if you think about it, what a middle is, is you're taking advantage of line discrepancies. Where do books have the line set at different levels? Here it's four and a half on DraftKings, right? And it's five and a half on Fliff. This is the play we're taking advantage of. So we're taking Texas State minus four and a half. So if they win by five or more points, this bet's gonna win. And we're taking Louisiana plus five and a half on Fliff. If they lose by five or less, this bet's gonna win. 
So what we can do is kind of full, pull up a little middle calculator right here. And I'll take you through the math. You know, we can kind of go through this bet and really break down how does it work, right? How, how is this middle tool which shows you line discrepancies? Again, the EV tool, right? The EV tool, if we go back here, this is price discrepancies. All the books have the line at three and a half, but you know, they have that under at like minus 180-ish. On, on Pinnacle, minus 150 on other sports books, minus 119 is a slam dunk. The middle tool, on the other hand, is books where they have the line set at different levels. Here it's four and a half and five and a half. So what we can do is we can pull up a calculator and I'll, I'll kind of run through the math quickly with this spreadsheet. And what we can do is like, so 250 bucks. That's what we're gonna bet on DraftKings. So we throw it into the calculator and it's gonna tell us, hey, on Louisiana plus five and a half on Fliff, bet 559.68, right? So I always recommend round to the nearest whole number, right? This is a weird bet size. You're gonna freak out the sports books, bet 560 bucks, right? Also a little plug for Fliff is Fliff is a great sports book. It's legal in almost every US state, right? It's legal in New York, California, Texas, Texas, California, Florida. They don't have a lot of sports books, but they do have Fliff. So take advantage of Fliff. But anyways, you can see here, we'll kind of go through the math and I'm going to show you how amazing this middle bet is that, you know, kind of odd sham recommended. So we're on Texas State minus four and a half for 250 bucks on DraftKings. Again, you could adjust kind of, you know, this little calculator to your settings or, you know, if you only want to bet 25 bucks or 500, you can adjust it. So let's say Texas State wins by five or more points, or actually this should be six plus points. I apologize, right? Let's say they win by six or more points. There's three outcomes we need to consider. If they win by exactly five, because if they win by five, both of these bets are going to win minus four and a half on DraftKings and the plus five and a half on Fliff, right? So we're going to win both bets. That's a middle bet, right? That's a middle bet. You're essentially taking the minus four and a half and the plus five and a half. So if Texas State wins by five, that's a middle, right? You're taking advantage of line discrepancies. So if Texas State wins by six points, here's what's going to happen, right? We're going to win this bet on DraftKings. So we bet 250 at plus 228 odds. So our net profit is going to be 250 times 2.28 is 570 bucks. And what I can do is just format this as, you know, kind of accounting, whatever. Let's get the dollar sign in there. Now, if Texas State wins by six or more points on Fliff, we lose this bet, right? We lose 560 bucks. So our net profit is 10 bucks, right? Now, on the other hand, if Texas State wins by four or less, so they're not going to cover a minus four and a half on DraftKings, then we're going to lose 250 bucks on DraftKings, but on Fliff, we go up 560 times 100 over 215. We bet 560 at minus 215 odds, so our net profit is going to be 1047, right? But now, this is the power of middle betting. So we're making money no matter what, right? And again, if you follow this calculator exactly, you'll make 1032 regardless of what happens. But I rounded my numbers so you can see there's a slight difference, right, in the net profit depending on if Texas State wins by six or four or less, right? And this could also be, you know, Louisiana wins the game, they're going to cover, that's included in there. Now, on the other hand, both bets are going to win if Texas State wins by six, or five, I apologize, right? That's the middle, minus four and a half, plus five and a half, right? So in that case, we're rooting for this rare window of opportunity where we would make 830 bucks, right? If Texas State wins by exactly five, we win Texas State minus four and a half. We also win Louisiana plus five and a half. We win both bets, right? And our net profit is gonna be 830 bucks. So that's what we're hoping for. So middles are kind of low risk lottery tickets and you can find them between a variety of different sports books. So I'll show you an example actually, or we can see right here. Well, we can take a look. So I'll give you a simple example. So if we go over to prize picks, whoa, they are bumping all the plays I locked in. So if we go over to prize picks, which is a sports book I use, you can see one of the plays I'm on right here is Dobbs over 199 and a half passing yards. So if you take a look at underdog fantasy, they have Dobbs's line at 220 and a half passing yards. So I could middle bet this if I wanted to, 
right? I could take the over 199 half, right? And I could take the under 220 half. And if Dobbs has 200 to 220 yards, then I'm going to win, right? I'm going to win my over 199 and a half on prize picks, right? If he has 200 to 220 yards, I'm going to win my over. I'm also going to win my under, which is exactly what I want. So middle betting is extremely powerful. It can be very profitable. And I call them low risk lottery tickets, right? If I middle bet this Dobbs play over 199 and a half on prize picks, under 220 and a half on underdog, I have this 20 yard, you know, 21 yard window of opportunity, right? Where I can win both bets. That is fun, right? It's also fun. I'm rooting for Dobbs to have between 200 and 220 passing yards. So that's middle betting. Um, again, just like the positive EV tool, you can set up filters. You can have it auto refresh by clicking this play button. When you want to see new bets, you can refresh. You can set up all sorts of filters. And it also works for live in play games. But again, when games are live, you got to move quick. My advice is if you're trying to live bet, do it like at timeout breaks, right? If you're live betting in the NFL, do it at timeout breaks or do it at halftime in between quarters. Because again, if you're trying to bet on an NBA game during possessions when they're like literally playing on the court, it's just really hard. So anyways, hopefully this was helpful um, on middle betting. So the next thing you definitely want to be using on Odds Jam is our bet tracker. So, you know, just like an investor wants to know their ROI, as a sports better, you got to know your profit and loss. Right? Like if you look back over the previous six months and you lost money or you didn't make as much money as you wanted to, then you know something needs to change, right? So it's imperative to track your results so you can look back over the previous few months, see where you can improve, what strategies, what sports books were making you the most money. So the Odds Jam Bet Tracker, you know, I'll show it to you right here. It's super easy to use and add bets to your bet tracker. So the first thing you can do is when you're browsing odds, Let's say you decide to bet the Bears. Of course, you want to get the best line, plus 224 on Circa. And you can see Odds Jam has these line movement charts as well. You can see DraftKings has been moving odds all around in this Bears game. And you can look at these line movement charts for any market, player props, whatever. But let's say you want to bet on the Bears. You can just click on an odd, and then you can add it to your bet tracker. Oh, I bet $100 on this. Another thing you can do is from any of the betting tools, like the positive EV tool, you just hit this little plus button. You know, you can see the Packers minus two and a half from the positive EV tool. Really good value at plus 135 on Fliff. So if we want to bet this, you just click the little plus button and then you can put in your stake, right? It's going to automatically pop up with your recommended bet size, um, which again is just from the Kelly criterion, but you can change this around. Now, the final way you can add bets to your bet tracker, which is pretty nice, is you can sync your sports book. So if you go here to the manage sports books, you know, you can automatically sync your sports book accounts with Odds Jam. As you can see, I've done with WinBet. And Odds Jam uses this other company called Sharp Sports, which reads in your bets from the sports books and automatically will sync to your bet tracker. So then you can kind of track your profit and loss in a dashboard. There's a sweat station that shows you all of your open bets. But one of the things I really like about the Odds Jam Bet Tracker is it will show you what the closing line is, right? So you can see in the Marlins Pirates game, I got over eight and a half runs at plus 100 odds. You can see the line closed. The closing line was minus 107. So I beat the closing line. Right? As a sports better, you're always looking to beat the market and beating the closing line, having positive CLV is really important. So you can see right here in the bet tracker, it'll kind of show you your profit and loss, all your open bets, upcoming bets, kind of stuff like that, your profit over time, all sorts of analytics. But again, you just want to track your bets. You want to know your results, know where you can improve. So the Odds GM Bet Tracker, it's completely free to use. You can follow other people. You can have people follow you, all sorts of stuff like that. But anyways, hopefully this was a good intro to the Odds GM Bet Tracker. And next, we'll kind of move on to the Odds GM Arbitrage tool. So next, we're going to go through arbitrage betting, which is making risk-free money sports betting. I know it sounds too good to be true, but I'm going to break it down to you. This is actually how I made my first $40,000 sports betting. So it's a strategy very near and dear to my heart. And again, you can set up all these filters. It works for live betting. You can select the sports books you use. And again, the same concept, even though I'm going to go through an arbitrage play between Fliff and Ballybet, these are two sports books I see right now. 
is the same strategy applies to arbitrage betting on any sports books, right? You'll see me hit arbitrage bets on FanDuel. All these books just made a risk-free $15 and tweeted this play out. Risk-free $15 in just like 20 seconds of work. So I love this strategy. It's not as fun as positive EV betting because it's risk-free betting. You're capitalizing on market inefficiencies to make a risk-free profit. So arbitrage, it, it doesn't only apply to sports betting. You'll hear this word often talked about in finance. It's, for example, let's say you could buy a stock for $100 on E-Trade, and then on Fidelity, you can immediately sell it for $120. That's never going to happen. The stock market is too efficient. But still, if you could buy a stock for $100 on E-Trade, sell it for $120 on Fidelity, you would have no risk and you would make $20 a profit. So essentially, because all these sports books set lines independently, sometimes they get super out of sync with one another, and you can bet the over, the under, right, or one side of the spread, another side of the spread, one team and their opponent, and guarantee yourself a risk-free profit. So you can see right here, you know, between Fliff and Ballybet, there is a huge discrepancy in where they have these point spreads. So the Ravens plus six and a half is minus 840 on Fliff. And you can see it's minus 435 on Ballybet, right? So there's a huge discrepancy. And what this tool tells us is, hey, we can make a risk-free profit of 1.15%. So I'm going to break down to you exactly how this works. So what you can do is you can pull up an arbitrage calculator right here. And let's say on Fliff, you're like, I want to bet 125 bucks. Well, this calculator is going to tell you, okay, on Ballybet, bet 579.32, and you'll make a risk-free profit of 818. Now, I always recommend you round this calculator. So round it to like 580, round to the rear nearest whole number. So let's say you say, okay, you know, and again, you can mess with these stakes. If, if you have a bigger bankroll, you could hit this for 250 and make 16 bucks risk-free. But let's say it's 125 bucks. The calculator tells us put 580 on Bally bet. And again, these are equal and opposite outcomes. Arbitrage is rare, right? It's not super common, but Odds Jam is scanning and updating. You know, sports books have millions and millions of lines available. Odds Jam is reading in all this data to point out those arbitrage plays. So let's go through this example. So 125 and 580 are a stake. So let's say now the Ravens end up covering the spread, right? Plus six and a half. So they lose by up to six points, right? Or they win the game. Well, in that case on Bally bet, we bet 580 at minus 435 odds. So I can scroll this down a bit and you can hopefully see it pretty well. So essentially I can zoom in as well. So on Bally bet, if we bet Ravens plus six and a half at minus 435 for 580 bucks, and again, this is just an example, you may use different sports books, our profit is gonna be 580 times 100 over 435, it's gonna be 133 bucks. But on Fliff, right, we lose Steelers minus six and a half. These are equal and opposite outcomes. That's what arbitrage betting is. You're betting equal and opposite outcomes on two different sports books to guarantee a profit. So we go up 133 in profit on Bally Bet. We go down 125 on Fliff, so we make $8 risk free. Now, on the other hand, if the Steelers cover the spread, if minus six and a half, so they win by seven or more, we lose 580 bucks on Bally Bet. But on Fliff, we go up 470 times 1.25, or sorry, 125 times 4.7. We bet 125 bucks, you know, at plus 470 odds. Just literally what we put into the arbitrage calculator. So our net profit is going to be $8. So we make a risk-free profit of $8 no matter what. That's arbitrage betting. So typically what I do is I just refresh this page, you know, see which sports books are offering the best arbitrage plays, lock them in, and then, you know, you're kind of good to go. So that's arbitrage betting. It's a strategy very near and dear to my heart. It's not necessarily the most profitable strategy, but it's risk-free money. That's hard to argue with. Um, I used to get home from work every single day and just lock in these arbitrage bets. You can make a lot of money doing it. So anyways, hopefully this was helpful on arbitrage betting. And next we're going to switch over to the bonus bet converter, which is really useful for promos. So we're going to discuss the free bet conversion tool, also called the bonus bet conversion tool, which essentially helps you with sportsbook bonuses, right? So you can see right here, a lot of sportsbooks have bonus bets, free bets. Some sportsbooks call them free bets. Some call them bonus bets. They're the same thing. 
Okay, but the first thing I wanted to mention is OddsGM is fully customizable, right? You can go into your settings here. You can set up all sorts of alerts. The app has push notifications as well. So, you know, the whole website is customizable, so you get alerts for bets you want to see. But let's go to the free bet conversion tool. So this is really useful for promos. A lot of sports books run promos where they give you bonus bets, and bonus bets work a bit differently than cash because you won't get the stake back if you win. Okay, and I know that's a little confusing, but as an example, let's say we put in a $100 bonus bet on the Steelers minus 10 and a half. If our bet wins, we would get back $800, right? You would get back 800, only the profit. Whereas if you bet $100 cash, you would get back $900 total, right? You're betting 100 to win 800 in profit, right? So you'd get back 900 in total if you placed an $100 bet with cash. So essentially what the bonus um, bet conversion tool does or the free bet conversion tool does is it shows you how to convert these bonus bets into risk-free profit at the highest possible rate. So for example, and again, fully customizable, depending on the state you're in, you may use different sports books, all that sort of stuff. But let's say our bonus bet is on FanDuel. We can search for FanDuel here. And then this tool is going to say, hey, the best conversion rate you can get is 85%. So if I do this FanDuel promo to get 200 bucks in bonus bets, this calculator is going to tell me, hey, the best conversion rate you can get is 85%. So you're turning your $200 bonus bet into $1,428, um, or sorry, into $171.12 of profit if you hedge on this other sports book, BallyBet, at minus 835 odds. So all this calculator is doing is, again, showing us how to convert our bonus bets for these promos, also called free bets on some other sports books, into risk-free profit. Right, so I'm converting a $200 bonus bet into a 171 bucks of risk-free profit by hedging on Bally Bet 1428.88 on um, the Ravens plus 10 and a half at minus 835. And again, you can refresh. So maybe you're like, oh, I don't use Bally Bet actually. You can get rid of Bally Bet, so we can just like remove it from our settings. And what OddsGM is going to do is it's just kind of going to scan through the market and then show you, okay, well, if you don't use BallyBet, your conversion rate's going to be a little lower, 83.97%, but that's fine, right? And we're going to want to put our $200 bonus bet on Allen Robinson to score a touchdown at plus 550 on FanDuel, and we're going to want to hedge for 932 bucks on Fliff at minus 155, and we'll make 167.94 no matter what. So you're converting your bonus bet into risk-free profit. That is exactly what the bonus bet conversion tool um, does for you. So a couple more tools on Odds Jam. First is the sportsbook screen. This basically just lets you browse any league, any market. It's going to show you line movements where all books are setting odds, stuff like that. It's more meant for advanced bettors. And then we have the low holds tool, right? So let's say you have a deposit bonus on DraftKings right? Usually these deposit bonuses have some strings attached, right? Like DraftKings, you get a $1,000 deposit bonus, but you have to bet $5,000 or something to get that bonus. So what you can do is you can use the low holds tool, search for DraftKings or any other sports book. And this tool is just going to show you where you can hedge on another sports book if you don't want to lose any money, right? So let's say, for example, on DraftKings, we want to get this $1,000 deposit bonus, but we don't want to just bet on a bunch of random stuff, right? So what we can do is we can say, okay, we use FanDuel. And again, this tool is fully customizable. So we could put $1,000 on Syracuse to win $2,050 in profit. And then we could hedge on FanDuel and put $2,050 on North Carolina at minus 205 odds. So if Syracuse wins the first quarter, right? On DraftKings, we're going to be up 2050 On FanDuel, we're going to be down 2050 right? Our net profit is zero. Now, if North Carolina wins the first quarter, we bet 2050 at minus 205 odds. Our net profit's going to be a thousand bucks. On DraftKings, we're down a thousand bucks. So we never lose money. You don't make money, you don't lose money. But the advantage of this, even though you don't make or lose any money, is you're working through your deposit bonus to get these bonuses. So the final tool that we can talk about on Odds Jam is the Fantasy Optimizer. So if we go right here, 
um, we can go to the fantasy optimizer. And essentially, there's a new type of, you know, kind of platform, which is very interesting compared to traditional sports books. So the way these platforms work is they have fixed payouts. So you'll notice on underdog fantasy, any two picks you select, right, overs, unders, you're always going to be getting a 3x payout. So there's no variable pricing. Any two picks I select, I'm going to get a 3x payout. You know, tennis, WNBA, whatever. Two picks, 3x payout. So what this tool does is it kind of shows you profitable bets on underdog fantasy, prize picks, parlay play, all these sorts of fantasy websites. And it's just going to point out line discrepancies. So for example, if you take a look right here, Devin Leary, who's the quarterback for Kentucky, Underdog Fantasy, you know, Odds Jam is recommending this play on Devin Leary right here. So if we go here, you can see they're recommending his over 28 and a half passing attempts line, right? You want to take all the plays in green, have a win rate high enough to be profitable. And then you can change around the type of slip you're going with. So Underdog has different payouts. Unsurprisingly, if you create a two-pick entry, you get a 3x payout. If you create a three-pick entry, you get a 6x payout. Again, it doesn't matter if you take overs or unders. Any three-pick entry you, you create, you're going to get a 6x payout. So let's say we want to make a three-pick on Underdog Fantasy, right? And again, this will work for prize picks, Underdog, Parlay Play. There's a lot of platforms like this, and the benefit of them is they're available, they're legal in a lot of states. So you're going to see Odd Sham is saying, hey... This play on Underdog Fantasy in green is profitable enough, not the plays in red, don't play those, no plays in red, only the plays in green is what I personally recommend going with. It's recommending Devin Leary over 28 and a half passing attempts. So why is it doing that? And all I do when I'm using this tool is I select, you know, the top picks in green and I just go with all of them. So if we go here, we'd want to take his over. That's what Odds Jam's recommending. And I'll kind of show you why here in a second. Again, every betting tool is just kind of based in data on Odds Jam. And then it's recommending, you know, Brady Cook under 34 and a half passing attempts and KJ Osborne over 27 and a half passing attempts. So we can go here, right? And this would be a great play to go with for a three pick entry. All the plays are in green. So all of them have a high enough win rate to be profitable in an underdog slot. So why is Odds Jam recommending Devin Leary over 28 and a half passing attempts? Is again, Odds Jam is completely based in data. So if we head over to like, you know, another sports book. So if we look at the Kentucky game and then we look at passing props, you're going to see Devin Leary, his passing attempts line is 31 and a half, right? Underdog has a line at 28 and a half. So we have this three completion discrepancy. All the other sports books have Leary's line at 31 and a half, like FanDuel, Underdog Fantasy has the line at 28 and a half. So that's a sharp pick to go with on Underdog Fantasy. So again, for this fantasy optimizer right here, these are technically fantasy sites. They're not sports books, and they're different from traditional sports books because there's no odds, right? Like on FanDuel, if I want to bet, you know, Georgia, they're going to be a big favorite in this game, minus 610. So I have to bet 610 to win 100. Whereas Kentucky is a big underdog. If I bet 100, I'm betting 100 to win 440 in profit. Whereas underdog fantasy, it's fixed payouts. Any three picks you select, you're always getting a 6x payout. So Odds GM does the math, scans the lines on underdog fantasy. You know, you can see underdog has tens of thousands of lines. So Odds GM is just scanning, reading in all this data pointing out discrepancies and all the profitable plays you want to go with on underdog. And again, you just want to take the picks in green. The yellow plays are close to being good, but not good enough yet. So red, no. Yellow, if you have two good picks, like if you have some picks you really, really like in green, maybe throw in a yellow one. But basically, you just go down the list. You want the plays with the highest win rate first. So this would be the best play to go with on prize picks, right? You can switch around on all these different platforms. On Jock Market, which is another fantasy platform, very similar to Underdog Fantasy, the top play is Brock Purdy under 32 and a half passing attempts. So anyways, this was an intro video to Odds Jam, all the different tools. Hopefully it was helpful and feel free to let me know any questions. Thanks so much.